Week 14 in the books. The playoff picture slowly coming into focus. Am I doing push-ups on the show today? I suddenly remember promising Darius Butler I would do that, and he is on the show. Mark Ingram also stopping by for their weekly visits. It's Up and Adams, and it begins uh, now. We're going to work hard till the whistle blows. And, um, you know, until the whistle blows, until that clock hits zero, we're giving it everything we got. And we're playing for each other, and, you know, it's just relentless. And I uh, just love those guys in the locker room, and the love we have for each other is just, you know, that's what, you know, was on display tonight. So. Any of you out there like, I don't know him? Well, get ready. That's pa Patriots pass rush shirt, Josh Uche, stealing the show, making a name for himself. Three sacks, New England's big 27-13 Monday night football win over the Cardinals. Patriots fans know him. He's been on it all year long. And this squad was relentless. They got to Colt McCoy. Poor Colt McCoy. How's he feeling this morning? Here's to you. Six sacks. Uh, and they do what they do in December. They just willed themselves back into a playoff scenario. And on the other side, listen, already a rough season all around for Arizona. And it got much worse. Kyler Murray got, was the first drive, I believe, exits the game. It's feared to be an ACL. We have tests today, of course, to confirm that. And if it's an injury uh, like that, then this is going to – this isn't like he'll be back next season. This will carry over and be something we're talking about into the season, into the fantasy drafts, into where do the Arizona Cardinals stand after someone else won a Super Bowl in their house. For 2023, that's the situation, and that's what's at stake. New England, they didn't leave this thing unscathed either. They lost Ramondre Stevenson to an ankle injury. Devontae Parker had a concussion early on, but they did lean on some rooks, and you love to see it. Pierre Strong, perfect name for a running back. Pierre Strong, come on, and Kevin Harris, uh, and this defense, which was mwah, spectacular to get the win. The Pats outscored the Cardinals 20 zip in the second half, and highlighted uh, and the spotlighted should be the game-changing touchdown. Kyle Duggar, you know him, you love him, knocking the ball away. I mean, here it is. Oh, come on, DeAndre, let's go. How does he knock this ball out? Oh my gosh, McMillan takes it for the scoop and score. This was huge. This changed the tone. It was one of those plays. And now the AFC wildcard race has really gotten wild. Give me the full screen. Here it is. The Patriots move to the AFC's final playoff spot with the win. Mm, so they're five and three in, co in their conference. Uh, and that pushes them a smidge ahead of the Chargers up on the Jets in that three-way tiebreaker. So this is going to be a battle this final month. Anything can happen, but it is clear that Belichick and his boys, Bayouge, are not going to just go fading quietly into the night, uh, especially with a playmaking defense like this. And we're talking to Lawrence Guy later today. We'll bring you that interview later this week on Up and Adam. And he, had a, he had his hand on the sack yesterday. He's been incredible. And this, if they make it, it is on this Patriots defense back, which it was many times when Tom Brady himself won Super Bowls for this team. So uh, we're kind of coming down the final stretch of the season. We're seeing some pretty important, significant storylines developing. Uh, so I thought that we could take a second to talk about a few the things that I'm sort of taking away now that all of week 14 has a, row, a bow and a uh, farewell postcard attached to it. And I want to start in the NFC with the Cowboys because uh, what went on in that game against the Texans is important. It took everything Dallas had to come up with the 27 to 23 win, okay? And here's what you're looking at. This is a goal line stand like no other. This is something that gave the offense a pulse, a chance, some probability on an abacus. And listen, Dak and co responded. What did they do? They marched right downfield on a 98-yard game-winning drive. Both sides of the ball stepped up with the game on the line and both deserve a ton of credit for that. We're all like living in this Odell, Jerry Jones, cute Matt. We're not, we have to pay attention with the facts. What's reality, what's happening. And the fact is that they came down to a dramatic finish against uh, you know, a one-win team using two different quarterbacks and playing with other top two receivers. That is a bit concerning. There's like a little bit of a mm, and there's always a little bit of a oh boy when it comes to Mike McCarthy. McCarthy. And he was asked about it after the game, here's what he said. You know, this this is football, and this is this. You know, I'm not trying to make excuses. I, I, you know, I get what's on my chest and the expectations. I get that, but it's about winning, and um, we got it done today. You got it done, and yeah, like you're not wrong. So I can't like, like poke holes in your logic. It's true, uh, and in the process of picking up said win, became the first Cowboys coach since Barry Switzer back in '95 to lead Dallas to double-digit wins in back-to-back -back seasons. That's all cute. That's great. That's a nice little tweet that flew out. I actually don't even know why I'm saying that. But listen, 
it's, none of that matters. Sunday's game is the perfect example of why everyone's hesitant to sort of wrap their arms. I certainly am. I'll be the first to say it. And if they do it, I'll be happy for them. Sure, I'm happy to see them go all the way in the NFC. But I can't get there yet. There's not enough proof. Would Odell tip the scale in their favor? It didn't. Listen, when he went to the Rams and he was really great, I still didn't think the Rams were going to win the Super Bowl. So I don't know. Coming off an injury off that, that would swing the balance in their favor. There are major trust issues. And you can try to make it work and you can try to like see couples therapy and do all of that. But if like these are foundational issues that have been extended my entire life period with this franchise and so many of you watching out there, it's hard. And that is the weight that is on the chest of Mike McCarthy. Whether, you know, he's on the sideline throwing a clipboard or whether he's showing up looking like Vince Lombardi and everybody's dragging him for it at Lambeau. The more I watch this team and I watch both CD and Michael Gallup completely silent on Sunday, the more I watch, the more I'm convinced that they need to get OBJ if they're going to contend. And yes, I know they signed my guy, T.Y. Hilton. I love him, a great veteran. Uh, and I do understand the outlined prominent concerns about Odell's health right now. Um, but let's say that it's true, right? And they say that he won't be ready until the playoffs. Okay, sometimes you just have to take a swing. Okay, Odell's proven time and time again, he's a bit of a difference maker and a different animal out there. Uh, and it's clear Dallas has not completely filled the void created by the Amari Cooper trade. Nobody wants to talk about that. So adding Odell makes sense. It's a swing. I don't know if it tips everything and I all of a sudden trust them and think they're taking out the Eagles or anything like that. But it gives you that much more belief in their ability to commit and to make a playoff run. Jerry, I love you. It's time. Do what you're born to do. Circumcise the mosquito and take this way. All right, now, next. Um, I wanna hear from Steve Wilkes. The Panthers had a big win over Seattle. Take a listen. Everything that, you know, we've gone through, they've gone through with the different, you know, coaching changes, you know, getting rid of players, or, or, the, or the organization trying to tank it, you know, all those different things. And to see how those guys respond and came out and played today, it is pretty uh, uh, thrilling and emotional, yes. It's also really fun. There's a lot to unpack here. And we start with the NFC South situation. Why is no one talking about the Panthers? Wilkes is their interim head coach. The Panthers somehow under his stewardship have climbed to within a game of the Bucks for the division lead. What? Like we have Mark Ingram, we're always talking about the Bucks. We got about the Panthers and Mark Ingram. That's the team to be and they Beat Pittsburgh this weekend, then you know Tampa falls to the Bengals. This is what would happen. Carolina would move into shoop first place. What a climb for a team that fired its head coach early in the season, a team that's, you know, pretty much become the NFL's redemption island, let's be honest. First, you have Wilkes, who, in my opinion, everyone's opinion, it happened live on my show. We talked about it. Raw deal in his first NFL head, head, head coaching gig. Fired one and done season in Arizona back in 2018. Enter Wonder Kid Cliff Kingsbury. Let's talk about how that's going. Look to highlights to last night to tell you. Uh, a year ago, Wilkes was the defensive coordinator at Mizzou. I'm from Mizzou. Oh, I literally just cracked my back doing that. Anybody hear that? Oh, Connor is saying I'm not getting out of push-ups, but I just think I'm playing hurt today. Uh, it looked like Wilkes would not, you know, it's hard. It's, you get the coaching gig, the head, head guy in charge, and then once you lose it, I really do. Am I ever getting back? Am I ever getting close to being back? A lot of guys never sniff a head coaching gig again. I could point to all of them. But uh, now, Wilkes might be coaching his way into a full-time gig, whether it's in Carolina or some other team that's like, hey, they're climbing, they're playing well. They might be the lead in the division, a division that has Tom Brady. What? Uh, and then there's Sam Darnold. Sammy. Following a preseason injury, Baker Mayfield experiment, P.J. Walker experience, he finally gets a chance to start again in Week 12, and he's 2-0, okay? He's 2-0 as a starter, and <laughs> you love to see it. Three touchdowns, by the way. How many interceptions? Oh, zero in those two starts? Amazing. How about the running back room? This team traded away their superstar and Christian McCaffrey. I literally just hurt my entire neck on that. Ow. I really did. Doing this? Aging is the dumbest. Anybody out there that cannot age, like, don't ever do it. It's the dumbest thing that's ever been. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Christian McCaffrey is still young, oft injured. He's been amazing. Um, 
and we got to take a look at what these these guys did in his stead instead. Because take a look at this. Since the trade, Deontay Foreman, sleeper du jour on our show often, uh, he's fifth in the NFL in rushing, averaging over 85 yards a game on the ground, which is incredible for a guy who was thought to be toast after an Achilles injury back in 2019. And there's also the Ben McAdoo of it all, by the way. There's too much to unpack here. The former Giants coach finding a way to make this offense work. And I gotta give credit to the defense. Oh, I am I am like the clickbait of young, feisty, Jeremy Chin, everybody, they look so great. And they're fine. the talent is there, but they're finally playing up to the super high ceiling of their talent and potential. So. If the Panthers can make this happen, they could win, the Bucks lose, they switch a play. This would be probably one of the coolest underdog stories, and one of the underdog stories that absolutely no one is talking about, and I don't know why. So that's what we do here on the Up and Adam show. I'm just gonna, can I get some ice? Conrad, I don't wanna do push-ups. Here's the problem with the push-ups. And can you voice of God me really quick? Conrad, can you be the voice of God or no? No. Uh, there's not enough of an incentive for me to do a push-up. If I, if you were to say, here's a million dollars, I could probably do five push-ups. But if it's just for the show, I could probably do one. Conrad, Marissa saying two. I thought you had a voice of God thing back there. Is that broken? What do you do? What do you do back there, Conrad? You know what? You get your mind right, Kay. Get Darius. your mind right. Stop making excuses over here. Get your mind right. Do it for the show. I came, I came in today. People. I came in today and they have a yoga mat here in front of me and I go, oh, yeah, <laughs> today I was out, I was out kind of late. I have a creak in my neck. You got a nice little, you like nice, what's that, a shacket? Yeah. Nice it's shirt, a jacket. It's, it's a shacket that yeah, should have a shirt under it, but look at this. Look what they brought. Look what they brought over here. I like it. I like Did it. Did you do you your push-ups? Sorry, Siri. Nobody's talking to you. Siri, no, no one is talking uh, to today you. Today was a leg day. No put, no push-ups today. Leg day. Got the legs in. Got in there early. Now got leg a little day. nice. Leg day. Nice I can walk do. in. Oh, we got a mall hey, walk in. An 80s. Yeah, but you know what? You got you got to stop complaining though. I heard a neck. I heard a shoulder. I heard a back in the last five minutes. Okay, well, so, come on. I'm Get so thanks right. for thanks for popping Darius on, guys. That was lovely. I'll <laughs> talk to you in a little bit, uh, Butler. Oh, we have another thing to talk about: uh, the Titans, right? Feel good story yeah. uh, on the verge of turning into an absolute nightmare. Take a look at this. They get blown up by the Jags at home, right? The Titans have now lost three straight. Fire their GM. Their AFC South lead has dwindled down to a measly two games. Jacksonville gaining ground quickly while Tennessee, man, what's going on in Tennessee? They seem to be getting further and further away from the team that they were earlier in the year. And I do not know what the answer is. This seems obviously, listen, I'm very compassionate and empathetic about injuries as I'm dealing with one, and that's what they have there. Riddled with injuries, Rabel's done a really good job of getting them to this point despite all of that. Uh, but I'm starting to wonder if this year is kind of time to, what do they say, mail the car home? Like, ship the car home? Start planning the vacation? Because I don't know if it's happening. The Titans rank in the bottom 10 in total offense and total defense. and. I'm really saying this because at this point, you know what teams are good, you know what defenses are tough, and the schedule doesn't get easier. Uh, the Chargers in LA, we're gonna be at that game! Our whole show's going to that game, woo! The Texans, the Cowboys, and then a week 18 meeting with the Jags that could end up being for the division title, which is woofferific. Um, things are at their bleakest right now, but if there's one coach that we hear about constantly, who I believe in, who I have faith in, that's gonna make it work, it is Mike Vrabel. And we've seen him navigate unique challenges every single year, and he's gotten, I mean, he could win a football game in Pandora of Avatar, guys, I'm telling you. He could, I saw Avatar last night. I think it's the 3D glasses, threw off. I wouldn't wear the 3D glasses at this thing because my makeup was so pretty. And I don't think anybody considers when you have to put on glasses, like what that would do to your entire, what if I wanted to go to the after party? So there is that. So, and then they have these cap, I like made a stand. I'm not wearing the 3D glasses. And then of course there's captions, subtitles, and you can't read them without, it's like such an incredible, beautiful experience. Everyone should go, but you can't read it. So then you're like trying to see what it says. So you can understand since I don't speak. Pandoran, but lovely movie, and everyone should see it. All right, we gotta go. Um, Rabel, what are you gonna do with Tennessee? Let's go, buckle up. Push-ups next.
move. The cornerback captain, former Colts, Patriot, Panther, president of, uh, of what? <laughs> of two anon, I forgot. <laughs> First, what did I do without you? Yes, he's president of that. I'm a little flustered. Where am I looking here? Great, because this stupid Matt is in here. I'm a, look, listen, I'm gonna change my mood right around. I'm a woman of my word. I promised you something last time you were on the show and you were so hyped. Take a look. Let's you go. told me that you were doing push-ups before you came on. What? So what is that about? I mean, you always got to get your get your blood flowing, get your you know have your arms right. Yeah. You know, for you're, you're insane right now. I'm gonna okay. Next time you come on next week, I will do push-ups. Bet, that's a bet. I think I can do two. Stick to it. That's a bet. FanDuel Sportsbook. Bet the under on two push-ups. Hey. How, how many hey, you, that's yeah. a bet. Okay. No bad beat refunds. None of that. There we go. There we go. I didn't want to have to. Now, are you going to make NFL fun of my fires. form? Like my like been, Joe Holder out with Nike, my I, trainer? No, I got 50. What's the prop? Two and a half? This over. I got, I got whatever. I, I, I bet the mortgage three. on the over. Three. Well, yeah, three. give me okay. the over. Let's go. <laughs> One. Two. Two. <laughs> you three. Should, you should hear them in my ear. Four. Four. Let's go. That's light. That's light. That's light. Okay, let's go. Let's lower it. Okay, a little, little, little lower, a little lower. Shut up, lower. That's good. That's good. You good. You good. Get up. Let's go. You did it. My neck hurts so bad. Hey, I'm an way to lady. set the tone, okay? Way to set the tone. Way to be a woman of your work. Oh my God, someone help me. I like it, okay. I like it, I love it. Well, Darius, now I'm fully sweating, so that's very fun. Uh, okay. You, you see how much better you feel? You got your blood flowing. Yeah. You feel good now, I know you feel good. I feel good. so great. I know you feel good. I really you want you to... What was that, eight, nine? Ten. I don't know. I lost count, it was like so many. That's what I'm talking about. You lock it, you just get going, I like it, I love it. Darius, Let's go, Kay. I really think you should be a coach. I'm really, I really... Let's go. I, there's probably no one else in the world that could get me to do push-ups. I think I, I just need you to be a coach. See, you thought only two, three, you end up getting eight, nine. Yeah. You see that? Um, it's mindset. It's all about the mindset. He, yeah, it's true. And here's what, well, here's what Marissa said. She said that if I did two, then you would have to name me the NFC and AFC team that'll make the Super Bowl. Oh, that's easy. Go ahead. Give, well, the Eagles. I said that a long, long time True. ago, so I'm August. sticking with the Eagles. Now I am a little torn. I am a little torn on the AFC side, but but I'm gonna go with a surprise here. Who I stuck with from the beginning. I'm going Chargers. I say the Chargers no! get hot. Chargers get hot. They get in the playoffs. Justin Herbert's got his weapons back. Bosa's coming back soon. Derwin's coming back soon. Give me the Chargers to get hot. Chargers. Eagles yeah. Super Bowl. How do you think the Dolphins feel about that? They they took down your team and now you're just jumping ship to the Bolts. Interesting. No, you know I, I still have my I, ha I still have my Dolphins winning the division. I am off the two MVP train right now. The last two weeks he really you know took a turn for not the worst, but he fell off a little bit. But I do expect him to get back rolling. I expect him to get back hot. Just been a little off, but I expect him to get back clicking uh, sooner rather than later. But uh, you know Chiefs, Bills, Dolphins. Uh, uh, that's pretty much good on that side. Then you got the Eagles, the Niners, Cowboys, Vikings, kind of on that other side. So, you know, it's going to be a fun playoffs, though. I love it. I, I have any, I've not even looked at my Twitter, and I just know that uh, push-up form Twitter is going to be all over. There's uh, nothing worse than push-up form hey, Twitter. I don't, I, I, I agree. Dude, don't don't worry about those Why don't you do these? Losers. I can do these. What are you doing, dude? <laughs> can you do these, bro? Uh, okay. Uh, I want to talk about this. Justin Jefferson. We need, oh my, God. oh my gosh, I need a DB breakdown on a matchup from this weekend, and it is that one. What am I looking at here? Man, this, this dude is special, man. He does everything. He he beats you motioning around the field, across the field. He beat, That's him in motion right there. Trying to, It's hard to keep him track of him, which, where he is on the defensive side of the ball. He can beat you from the outside. He can beat you lined up in the slot. They actually took a 70-yard touchdown away from him, and he still had over 200 yards. But, I mean, 18 is always on the move. Kevin O'Connell has been doing a great job uh, keeping him moving, similar to what Kip Cooper Cup was doing last year. But he's more dynamic. He's more explosive than Cooper Cup, um, especially before he catches the ball. And Kirk Cousins has been doing a great job 
um, getting the ball, getting him the ball. Obviously, you have Thielen, you have Osborne, you have Hawkinson, you have other weapons. But Justin Jefferson, you see him right here in the slot. Mm -hmm. Outside leverage, he still runs an outside route. Kirk Cousins get hit, throws him on the back shoulder, seven route right there. So that's an accurate Oof. place ball. That should have been, it should have been a 70-something yard touchdown, but they said he stepped out. That's bad referee right there. Just let the play go on, then you review it after it's done. But Justin Jefferson, he's been unbelievable all year long. How how do you stop it? You don't. You can, you, can, you can try to slow him down. I saw Belichick try to, you know, deploy double teams. You saw the Lions trying to double team him. So whenever you're double teaming a guy and he's still wreaking havoc, that's like, you know, double teaming a pass rusher. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, one of these guys, and he's still creating havoc. There's really no stopping him. You can only try to limit him. Uh, but he's having a special, special offensive player of the year type year if that MVP award, you know. Did you see Did you see Chris award. Carter on my show yesterday say he's the third on the list of franchise wide receivers for the Vikings? He's third, Randy Moss is second, and Justin Jefferson is the best? I did not see that. that. I did not see I, 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 Chris Carter, CC, that's the, obviously a legend. He's been a little humble right there. I would still keep Randy and CC at the top right now, but Justin Jefferson is well on his way. Special, special young talent in this league, man. I love watching 18 play. Yeah, so basically you're saying if you see him on the schedule, just chalk it up as a loss. It's sort of a... No, nah, never say that. Hey, hey, never say that as a corner now. The, the, the Jets, last week, they did pretty good. You know, you got two corners, yeah. Sauce. You got DJ Reed. They obviously got a great defensive front. That's really what it's about when you're playing those type of receivers because they move around outside, inside. Yeah, he had a motion, career high day, stuff. Darius. He had the, the most. Hit the quarterback. <laughs> Not against the Jets, he didn't. Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. Not Storm, against the Jets. Sure. Storms are brewing. Lions. Let's move it on here. Storms uh, are brewing. Baltimore losing quarterbacks left and right. Huntley leaves. He's in concussion protocol. Reports are looking like Lamar yeah. still a few weeks out from being available. So, what if you're the head, if you're Harbaugh? What do you do to sort of weather the storm so you can hold on to first place? Because you know my Bengals are going to win the division. The, <laughs> the Bengals are rolling. And, and obviously, if I had to pick a division winner right now to finish strong and win that division, I'm right there with you with, uh, with what Joe Burrow's doing at the quarterback position. But it's the Ravens, they find a way to win somehow, some way. Last week, I felt like they were supposed to lose that game. Snoop and the guys found out found a way to win it. They are equipped. If any team is equipped to win without a quarterback playing great ball, it's the Baltimore Ravens with that run game. So hopefully they can get that run game going, get those tight ends involved with whoever's playing quarterback. But pray to God Snoop Huntley somehow can yeah. con clear uh, concussion protocol because it's tough to win this league without a quarterback, even if you're on that great Ravens team um, with, with hardball calling the shots. That's going to be tough, man. That's going to be really tough. And shout out, maybe just lean on J.K. Dobbins. We're going to talk about it, I think, later this week. But I'll say this. I think it's a, a lazy take, but one that I'm guilty of, where it's like, oh, those running backs are interchangeable with the Ravens in that backfield. And, like, anybody – but, like, J.K. Dobbins being healthy out there, he's different. He's different for that team, and I think he needs some some love, and I think they should rely on him a little bit more. Um, you are I'm with, you. I'm with yeah. you there. You're a DB guy. So I come to you with my questions, and I think these young corners, they're acting up a little bit <laughs> on uh -oh. Twitter. They need some, be a good thing. They need some captain cornerback. Guidance. Marissa found this. It's Trayvon Diggs, a star, of course. And he goes, credit me with the interception, please. I had it first, LOL, or we can split it 50-50. And here's what he's talking about. Okay, so what are you seeing in this play? And uh, what are your thoughts? This this is a good old Hail Mary. So this is one of those situations that you can never really practice in practice. You really only get these real live situations in the game because people don't, coaches don't want everybody jumping up, fighting for the ball. Exactly what's going on here. And they tell you all the time as a DB, bat it down, bat it down, bat it down. But real DBs, real ball hawks, which Trevon Diggs is, they want every opportunity to get an interception. Yeah. So I love this. I love this from Diggs. I love it. Complain. Get your interception. I've seen all-time great pass rushers complain for days yes. after a game to get a sack. <laughs> or a half a sack of credit to them. And I would hate for Trevon Diggs to look back on his career and have 59 interceptions ah. and not have 60. So, you know, ball hawks, they think about stuff like this. So I love this from Diggs. I love, I love every second it is. Well, I love Ooh, that. I'm glad okay. he squeaked out with that win, too. Yeah. That, was, that was close. It's true. And then we have this other one, right? It's a, de it's a deleted tweet. And I, that, I'll just, can we just stop there? Don't delete your tweet. What? Did it delete I, deleted, I deleted one last night. I deleted one last <laughs> what night. What was so that? I, I, I can't complain. It was, I just didn't, you know, I don't like negative energy on my timeline. And I literally tweeted out, 
I'm feeling like a big night for Kyler Murray here tonight. And of course, with everything that's how this year has been going, he gets hurt like two plays later. So, you know, you got all the trolls coming yeah. to the tweets. I'm like, all right, let me just delete this. But uh, obviously we're hoping for a speedy recovery from Kyler Murray. But let's see this Sauce Gartner deleted <laughs> tweet. <laughs> okay, here it is. Here it is. This is, you know, he goes after his own fans. Speaking of uh, Ooh, a little negativity here, talking about Pro Bowl votes because he's trailing Tariq Woolen. And he says to all Jets fans, how are y'all letting this happen? I thought New York City was the best city. Dang. I don't know. Going after your own fan base. Your thoughts? <laughs> Going, going after your own fan base, I would almost always uh, tell you that's a no-go. That's, that's never a good move, especially in New York City. But this isn't bad. I feel like this was a, it, this was good-spirited. And I, I was surprised to see those numbers from Tariq as well. Obviously, one of our favorite players yes. been in shutdown city a ton, so he deserves all the votes that he's getting. But I would expect all the hype that Sauce Garden has been getting as well, been the top five pick in, the, in New York City, in the Big Apple. So I'm with you, Sauce. Get on these fans, man. It, it, and you can't, once you delete a tweet, you probably can't put it back up. But I'm oh, with yeah, you we, on the deleted uh, tweet. I, I mean, like don't, you, you can let that don't one delete anything from Marissa. will find it. Marissa tracked down. <laughs> she's got receipts. She's the best, you know, she's doing her thing. Okay, you mentioned Shutdown City. I'm going to get uh, the all red Starburst, and I'm going to grab some Ooh, Flamin' Hot okay. Cheetos, and we are in the car. Take me to Shutdown City. Let's go to Shutdown City. Woo! We got a South Florida resident. But now he's out there in Duval. Hey. We got Tyson Campbell targeted three times, three PBUs, and a big time upset win over division rival Tennessee Titans. So shout out Tyson Campbell, young corner who can have a very, very good career in this league. And then the guy that shares my namesake, and he's also ready go. to switch positions. So I had to make sure he got to the city at least one more time. Big play slay. Just doing his thing. He's been one of the best corners, if not the best corner in the NFL from week one up until now. One of those engines that make that Eagles defense go. So Darius Slay is back in the city, back in shutdown city. There he and is. then new first time mayor, JC Horn. Yeah. Now quietly having a special, special year. Another special year. His last year, his rookie year was cut short by an injury, but J.C. Horn has been a big time, big time corner. He's in Carolina. You know, they, that team obviously not making a bunch of waves until they may sneak up and win this division. But J.C. Horn, he's been playing some really good ball uh, for that Steve Wilkes defense down there in Carolina. He's the mayor this week and shut down city, J.C. Horn. And he, and I love the synergy here because I gave a lot of love to the Panthers. He and that defense have those Panthers one, one yeah. back of the Bucks for leading the division. And they never That's win crazy. road games. They took down the Seahawks, what incredible. What do they do with Wilkes after the season? You know, four and four, and I think they've won three of their last four. You had Sam Darnold. I mean, he's not playing great. Got a couple wins under the center. Two. But I think, I think you take a long, hard look at Steve Wilkes. As this real head coach, um, after this season, Sam Darnold has no interceptions and two wins as a starter. You love to see it Dang. for him. They don't have Christian McCaffrey, their entire offense, and they're making it happen. That's people want to Steve Wilkes. There's your guy, and if it's not in Carolina, I hope it's somewhere else. Yeah, I would love to see it in Carolina. I would also love Luke Keekley to come back on and be on that <sighs> defensive staff as well. It'd be, uh, I think, it'd be a good rolling yeah, down what is, there what's in Luke Carolina. Doing? Who knows? Luke is, Luke's an unbelievable teammate, unbelievable player, yeah. so smart. I think he walk in the door and be a defensive coordinator somewhere. Um, so I'm hoping to see him back on the sideline, back in the game in some form or fashion. We're, what we're watching here is Darius Butler put together his coaching staff. And, we, you know, you're manifesting all of this. Let me ask you this quickly. Uh, I, told, I brought this up to you several times, and you sort of – do you not believe that we're cursed? Yo. Okay, I, I'm not I'm not a big believer in curse, but yeah. yes, something something is going on. I didn't see a parlay of yours out there yesterday. I did. I, I grounded so please myself. Please, don't tell me you quit. You can't quit. All right, I quit. you cannot quit. I quit. You got to get back up in the batter's box and take another swing. But yeah, it's it's something going on right now. And we got to figure it out. But we got we to turn the tide. We got to turn the tide. Maybe more push-ups will help. All right. Thank you so much. Darius Butler will do more. Get, we got to get rid of We got to get rid of the ghost. We got to get rid of the ghost of the, the bad. Oh, my God. I'm going to die. I think 10. Tell her 10. We'll get it done. Bye, Darius. Go to commercial. Go to commercial. Get 10. Get 10. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm ready for war. I'm destined for greatness. That's where to my hobby that lead. I'm up on the scene. I told you I'm up on the scene. Yeah. I'm ready for war. I'm ready for war tonight. I'm ready.
Our guest now, everyone's absolute favorite. We missed him last week, so we welcome in Heisman Trophy winner, Saints superstar, running back Mark Ingram. Good morning. Okay, okay. what's up? Okay, okay, messy. Yeah, you know we represent today. They play messy. at 11. 11 yeah. Eastern, or no, 11 our time. No, no, it's 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock okay, okay. Central. So that's a red card for you. We'll be doing that. It's really a red card for your boy Conrad, but then you're going to give me a red card for calling him out for it. Uh, Conrad, the world does not start and stop at your convenience. And uh, at 11 a.m. Pacific, the world is on Eastern Standard Time. Um, okay, let's talk about this because it, we're going to have our fun, and I'm going to ask you how Jameis is, and when we're going to see him. We're going to do all the things we always do. But first, uh, I haven't heard you be able to speak since suffering the loss of the Buccaneers, the injury, and, you know, uh, the fourth quarter situation uh, going out of bounds. And I know you sent out a tweet uh, just that same night, but I just want to give you a chance to sort of say your piece here. What do you want to say to Saints fans? I mean, I, I don't really, you know, obviously we wish we would have finished that game, you know what I mean? But uh, you know, I put my heart into this game, put uh, my everything into this game. So, um you know, I always try to do everything I can to help the team win. And um, unfortunately, you know, knee got hurt in that game. And, um, yeah, everything transpired the way it did. We mm -hmm. wasn't able to finish that game out. So uh, that's hurt. That's very – that hurt us. That hurt us. That hurt all of us. That was painful. And I think there's many things that, you know, we wish we could have done better throughout that game to make sure we secured the victory, uh, myself included. So, uh yeah. You know, you gotta continue. You gotta, you gotta just continue to work, continue to be better, continue to learn, continue to grow from mistakes. You know what I mean? And uh, shoot, that's what we're gonna do. So we, you know, I'm a Saints fan. You know that. But the staff, nobody's a Saints fan on my team. But we have a group text. And during that game, we're all, you know, we're so, just so you know, like so fans of you, so invested in watching you get the rock, tote the rock. You looked like, you know, it was 20, 2009 out there. It was amazing. And then you got hurt in the game, and we were all so deflated, and we're all obviously rooting you on and hoping that your recovery is going well. I don't like the updates that I'm reading online. What's the update? What, what updates are you getting? MCL, five, four or five weeks. So I'm seeing all, yeah, all yeah. I mean, I'm seeing your season's over, and I don't want to believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, unless, you know, we get into the playoffs and have a couple games in there, then, um, yeah, it's probably, it's probably done right now for the regular season. So the blessing of it is that, you know, I don't have to have surgery. I do have a, you know, a partial tear in the MCL. Mm. And, uh, the good thing about it is that it doesn't require surgery, that it will heal on its own, and I'll be back to full strength in about four to six weeks. So that is the blessing, you know what I mean? Um, it could have been a lot worse. Usually MCL surgeries take a substantial amount of time, and um, it's just a blessing, a true blessing, and I'm thankful that um, I do not need surgery and that I'll be good here in about a month, you know, going to the off-season healthy, going to the off-season um, you know, feeling good. So I'm, I'm, I'm blessed and I'm thankful that I do not need surgery because anytime you have to go into that knife and get surgery, um, that, that that's just mentally, physically, emotionally, it's kind of a strain on you. So I'm definitely thankful that the Lord blessed me uh, to at least not be able to have surgery. Mm, and it's a beautiful thing, and we're happy to hear that too. Uh, I think the questions are going to come. I'm not going to ask you, but the questions are going to come now if your season is in fact over, and I think you guys have to win out, and there's a 20% chance. I looked at it, it's like a 0.9% chance of you guys making the playoffs. The questions about your future are going to come. I talked to Taylor Luan last week, and we had this really open conversation. He's thinking about retiring, he's mulling it yeah. over. It doesn't sound at all like you are. Like, you very much want to play. You very much want to bring a team a championship, right? Just to get that straight out there. So nobody, maybe this will prevent those questions from coming because it doesn't sound like, you, like you're like you ready to leave the game or thought about your future in that regard at all. No, ma'am. I have no desire to retire, especially um, not this at this moment. Uh, I have all the intentions on uh, preparing myself mentally, physically, emotionally to prepare myself to get ready for a team. Hopefully that's the Saints. Hopefully they bring me back. We'll see. But um, if not, I'll be getting healthy. I'll be working my butt off for whatever opportunity does arise. And um, so no retirement over here. Uh, so you guys will not not Mark Ingram the second ain't done. Yeah. He ain't done yet. So um, yeah. So 
I got like, you know, it was a tough year, you know, uh, you know, with injuries and different things like that. But um, I do feel good playing ball when I'm out there moving around, like you said, you know what I mean? In the game, you know, I felt good. I was running well. So um, I, I still love it with all my heart and soul. I put all my heart and soul into this game. And um, I still got a lot more to give, still got a lot more to accomplish, still got a lot more to do. So no retirement in my future right now. I know. <laughs> and I know that even in these last four weeks, you're going to be in that in, in the team, around the team, on the group text, around the building, just that energy that you have, that's important in the locker room too, that veteran presence yeah. and how you're always looking for the blessing in any adversity. Like teams want that. So I'm glad to hear that you're not you're not mulling that over. Um, no okay, mulling so, over here, Kay. Good, good. So <laughs> Dennis Allen, he already, he did your job for you, Mark. He took it easy on you and he said Andy Dalton is the starter for this week again. Uh, so I don't know, sadly, I don't know if Jameis is going to get a shot this year. So I did want to give you some credit for how you masterfully navigated my repeated attempts to get any scrum of information from you all year. Here's your finest work, Mark. We're going to see Jameis, right? Hey, I hope my boy is healthy. I hope he's ready to roll. I know he's been back out there, you know, kind of like an emergency quarterback role suited up. I'm trying to read your face. Hey, you, you can't get me, Kay. When will we see him back under center, Mark? We got two good guys, man, and we all love Jameis, and he's a great player, great leader. Rooting for Andy, too. I love them both, man. Those are both my QBs. What is going on with the quarterbacks? Hey, man, I just <laughs> I line up and play with whoever's under the center. So when are we going to see Jameis? I don't know what to tell you, Kay. Like, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Like, we're here. We working. I can't give you a oh, solid oh, answer. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. I just like to ask to see how you how you tap dance. I like to see you dance. I'm, I'm going to finesse it this week. Yeah, this week, a little this, a little that, a little that. I mean, that's a job well done. Hey, I, I, listen, you, 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 you put the pressure on me every week, so I just had to find a way. You know what I mean? I love my boy Jameis with all my heart and soul. That's my guy. That's my Heisman brother. Andy Dalton, the Red Rifle. I love my guy, too. You know, I'm just a team guy. I love my teammates. I love my QBs. And uh, you, you tried to put the pressure on me week in and week out. It's, it's week 15. For 15 weeks, you didn't give me a crumb of that. Dennis Allen did, at least for this week. All right, let's keep the fun going. You're wearing the messy kit. We love it. World Cup action's happening. And you're very passionate about little footy. You like soccer because you are part owner of the Major League Soccer Team, D.C. United, as we all know and love. So as is one of our favorite segments on the show. Whoa! It's time for Whoa. Red Card with Mike Ingram. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get it. Okay, let's do what it. What we got this week? All right, we're gonna we show you. We're week. gonna show you footage. Here it is. Well, listen, the World Cup brings out lots of fans. Fans who didn't know they were fans. Fans who are pretending to be fans for the month. And when your team loses, it can be very hard to deal with. Uh, as you can see with this fan from Mexico. Let's Ooh. take a look. He's destroying Ooh. a TV. Okay, that's you know. Okay, and then he takes. No, it keeps going. I, he stabs it? He's murdering the TV. Yeah. That's a red card. I mean, two red cards. But how, oh can my not, but how good is that TV? Like, nothing's getting through that TV. It got to be, what, a Samsung or a Sony? Like, we, like it's got to be, right? It's definitely not like... You know, the Sam's Club is additional, no, you know what I mean? Not like, the Kirkland brand TV, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, red, my man, my man's got a red, two couple reds. Yeah, you know, but he's I mean, out. yeah. And also, if you're going to do it, like, do it. Take it off the wall, like Mick Jagger right. thing. Break the... You commit know, the, to it. Commit, commit to, to it. it. Do boldly yeah, what you do Don't just dab your big toe in the water. Commit <laughs> to it. Finish that TV. <laughs> uh, this past weekend, Mark, Ohio State's CJ Stroud, and your Heisman winner, my friend, he was at the Heisman Trophy ceremony, and here he is walking on stage. He forgets to shake someone's hand. Uh, Desmond Howard, you know, Michigan guy. You know on. what I mean? He ain't want nothing to do with that. Tell me. Is that okay? I mean, man, that's a red card, man. We got to pay homage, young CJ. I mean, you up there with the Heismans. Desmond Howard, man, he's one of the Heismans. Shot the Heisman pose. Like, we know the, we know the Ohio State Michigan is a real thing. But I mean, in that situation, at that event, I mean, you gotta shake hands with the with the with the OGs, man. Come on, dog. I'm a big fan of CJ Stroud, man. You know what I mean? I want him to do well. And man, that's a red card though, man. We gotta we gotta have you do better than that. Red dog. card. All right, Tom yeah. Brady 
had a rough day against the Niners defense on Sunday, as we all saw. Two interceptions. And then after the game, okay, Dre Greenlaw asked Brady to sign the ball he intercepted in the game. Uh, what? That takes some nerve from Greenlaw, no? Hey, you only got one shot at it. You picked the goat off. You got him at midfield. I mean, can you sign my pick ball for me, dog? Like, I'm not giving him a red on this. Not giving him yellow. Just you know, caution. You can't be doing this to any other quarterbacks. You get one pass because it is Tom Brady. Got seven Super Bowls, more than any franchise. Yeah. So you got one shot at it. You picked him off. You need him to sign the ball. I'm gonna give him a yellow. We can't do this no more. It's a caution. You know what, what I mean? You, what do you make of Tom Brady's reaction there? I mean, does he feel honored? <laughs> does he feel disrespected? Is he offended? I I don't know here. I mean, like you if you, off, if you, you fumbled, if guess you fumbled the, the ball, and somebody Lord came up Jesus. to you and said, <laughs> and said, Jesus. sign this, sign this ball. Lord Jesus is right. I'm you fighting. Say, I'm fighting. I'm saying f him. <laughs> <laughs> F him. Get off me! That's what you're saying. <laughs> Get off me, man. That's what you do that to me. Ain't gonna be no cards. No cards. Gonna be squabbling. No, you're gonna, you're gonna get be that. Squabbing. Yeah, you're gonna be that guy's gonna be the TV in that Mexico World Cup clip. I get it. Okay, during during the Seahawks uh, Panthers game, Drew Locke wanted a penalty flag. Did you see this? Yeah. But he's very yeah. enthusiastic. What do you make? What do you, what is going on here? What do you make of this? I know he's asking for the flag, but I mean the motion is a little, you know, a little low. You know what I mean? So, you know, just off the location of the motions of the movements, we're gonna give him a red, but we know your intentions was for the flag and the yellow. But just off the visuals. We gonna give you the red, Drewski. <laughs> just off the placement, it matters yeah, where on the, the what yard the line. Placement. Right, like, where like on the could've, field. Could've, could've, you could have been more off the hip with it. You ain't had to be <laughs> vertical and horizontal with it. You know what I mean? I didn't even <laughs> realize that was why it was. I did not. I'm very. This is not. I was not. I did not okay this. I did not say <laughs> this is the clip that I wanted. Just everyone's out there watching. Woo! Giants punter. Uh, had a little difficulty with this one. Did you see this, Mark? D what you got? Roll this. Did he forget which foot to use? Oh my goodness. He dropped it, man. He dropped the ball. Talk to me. He dropped. So he dropped it, and he then punted? What is it? So, so he catches James the snap. Gillen. Long hair, hair flowing, drops it, then punts it. What, what happened? Man. He made a mistake. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> He made a mistake. It's a red card. It's crucial because it's 14 0 at this moment, and we need you to pin the Eagles back yeah. inside the five yard line, and you don't do it. And it was a penalty. It was a penalty for illegal kicking. So he already kind of got his. So maybe we spare him. It was a penalty. It was a penalty, too? Yeah. Illegal kicking? Yes. I think so. Yeah. Eagles got the ball back from where he kicked it. <laughs> We're we going to let him Lord. live because. He, he has his pain and suffering already, so we're going to let him live today. Conrad we're is gonna give him, Good. Conrad we're going to give him a yellow and tell him to caution himself to never do this again. Uh, because Con he's gotten a red already. He's gotten a red from his special teams coach. That's he's true. gotten a red from his head coach. He's gotten a red from himself. So we don't need to give him a red here on the Up and Adam show. No. We can be merciful. <laughs> That's nice of you, a merciful. We love a merciful king. We do. We, yes. Yes. You know, we don't have to always drop the gavel on somebody, we can, we can give mercy and love and some grace. Mark, do you think that Argentina wins the World Cup? Who? I think those friend, those boys over there in France, Mbappe. I think they're tough. I think that's a tough, I think that's a tough bunch, a very talented bunch. But if anybody could do it, it is the GOAT himself, Messi, and Argentina. So we shall see. We shall see. I think it'll be an Argentina France final. And maybe the GOAT can have some magic with the left foot. Curve one in. Yeah. Pass the French. You know, they play some good defense and, and win 1 0. We'll see. We'll see. But I'm going for the Messi. I'm not I'm getting the Messi. We love you so much, Mark. Yes, you were rooting for Messi. We are rooting for you. There is a chance the Saints can make the playoffs. You got to win out, though. So good luck against Atlanta. Go get it done. Who that, baby? Who that? Let's get it. Any chance is still a chance. So That's we're right. Going for it. All right. We love that you're feeling good. Avoided surgery. Mark Ingram, everybody will be back on the Up and Adams show. Bye, Mark.
Peace. Peace. Love Peace. up and out of the show. Love my whole crew. <laughs> All right, those don't, I mean, put your butt down, Kay. That's what Joe Holder would be saying. Out there in, in the heels, though. That's right, Vitali. Carmen Vitali will be in studio. Oh my God, she could probably do a million push ups compared to my two that I did. In, in good form, I probably did one. Hit the lights, baby. Time to spotlight a player, a performance, somebody not getting enough attention. We like to dish out attention here on the show. I'm not sure there's a player who embodies what this segment is all about than Devontae Smith this season. The Eagles, big news. They get A.J. Brown. I talk about it. I talk about it like every day. Darius Butler talks about it every day. So does everybody. But you cannot underestimate what Smith has meant to Philly's offense. Okay? He has been balling. And we're going to give him some shine. He had a catch. <laughs> Oh my gosh, on fourth and seven, it, it is what sparked the Eagles and led to the 49-22 blowout. Look at that, oh. <laughs> Marissa, were you just dying when you saw this? Yes, amazing. The concentration it must take to make a grab between two defenders, I don't know, I could have never done it. it sounds, looks, looks insane. He stays on his feet and then he takes in for a 41-yard touchdown uh, and a score on fourth down. It is absurd. And he's consistently made, I think, some of the best catches that we've seen in a league this year. And no one's really talking about him, probably because of A.J. Brown, probably because of that, probably because, like, it's hard to change your reputation in a league. And, like, he, I, people thought what they thought about him last year, but he's great. And A.J. on Sunday became the first Eagles receiver to hit 1,000 yards since Jeremy Macklin. <laughs> in 2014. Devontae, uh, he's on pace to join him as well. So after not having a thousand yard guy for like eight years, Philadelphia, it looks like Philly is going to have two of them this year. So stop just talking about A.J. Brown. I'll give you a red card and a yellow card and talk about Devontae. Talk, talk about how he's too skinny. He's in the NFL. He's amazing. And he gets uh, our lights and our shine and our love.